best times to visit Niigata Prefecture is at the very start of salmon season. It brings a wave of excitement to riverside communities. Niigata is known across Japan for its exceptional local products like salmon, rice, and sake. And I'll be diving headfirst into its sustainable food and drink culture. My journey begins on the banks of the Okawa River in Murakami. In October, the river becomes a haven for spawning salmon, and fishermen still use a primitive technique to catch them. Every season, these wooden platforms are rebuilt and dismantled to preserve the natural environment. Salmon is intricately tied to Murakami's identity, so much so that it's often referred to as Salmon City. Murakami's salmon culture almost died out several times throughout history, but residents like Shinji Kikawa and his family fought to keep it alive. Long-time sake brewers, the Kikawa family have lived in Murakami for 15 generations, but they only entered the salmon industry after World War II, when Murakami's food habits were becoming more westernized. They practiced the traditional way of preserving salmon, using only sea salt and the blustery winds off the Sea of Japan. Murakami's sake brewery is not only in Japan, but also in the world, it's a very special sake brewery in the world. It's a very special sake brewery. The fish are hung up to mature for one month to one year and are always handled with the utmost respect. Nothing goes to waste. Thank you. Mm. Wow. It's very concentrated in flavor. To try more of Murakami's famous salmon dishes, I visited Mr. Kikawa's restaurant, Izutsuya. The grilled skin is like a spectacle. The salmon's fins become crispy chips, and the internal organs are showcased with pride. My final dish was salmon soaked in what's perhaps Niigata's best known specialty, sake. Niigata's geography is practically made for sake brewing. The crystal clear mountain waters irrigate some of the country's finest rice paddies. I'm heading to Nagaoka City's largest brewery, Asahi Shuzo, to learn why this sake is coveted around the world. To my surprise, the master brewer suggested a walk in the park first. This entire garden overlooking the brewery was planted by Asahi Shuzo as a solid foundation for its sake production. On a tour of the brewery, I got to see the laborious process behind each bottle. The use of machines is now standard, but human knowledge remains crucial. Mr. Moroyoshi spent three decades training to become a toji. He can tell if his sake will be good just by touching the cooked rice or tasting the koji, a mold used in the fermentation process. Mm. It is a little bit sweet. You can taste the, um, the sweetness and a little bit fruity. Using different rice polishing methods, yeasts, and aromas, Asahi Shuzo can make a variety of different sakes. After getting my fill of salmon and sake, I'm relaxing at one of Niigata's 144 hot springs, or onsen, with an extraordinary backdrop. This is the perfect place to sit and reflect on my experience here in Niigata. There's a huge respect for nature here, and all of the many gifts it gives us. Nature is Niigata's lifeblood, and its residents help keep that blood pumping.